Uh, the most recent information I looked at was that one in every five Irish primary school children are overweight or obese. And apparently that's an improvement. And, you know, let's, you know, because these things are often doomsday. So this seems to be an improvement. So one in every five Irish primary school children overweight or obese. What, what do you want to say about the kids? I, I think there's a few things. I, I think we, we have spent too much time scaring people. Uh, things are not as bad. Now, the problem with a lot of these surveys, you're going out and you're asking kids to fill in a questionnaire. And there's a huge issue with that. Because if you look at the current most recent report, according to that, only 10% of Irish kids between the ages of 10 and 18 meet the minimum recommended daily dose of physical activity, which is 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity activity. Okay. That's basically what the questionnaire data is telling us. So kids should be doing an hour every day and only one in 10 are getting that? Correct, between okay. the ages of 10 and 18. Do you know a point on that as well? Um, so I was lucky enough to grow up in a, in a generation where helicopter parenting wasn't as um, prevalent as it is now. Now, <laughs> I'll be a helicopter parent, don't worry. And the digital revolution hadn't taken hold. So I played on the streets. And we, you know, I, 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 from memory, weekends, you're pretty much out the whole time. You're doing whatever. There was a rollerblading phase. There's football constantly. There's climbing trees. There's tip the can. There's a million different pursuits. And UCC had a very interesting study recently where they said that skills... Uh, generally mastered by six-year-olds, and we're talking all of the uh, stuff I've just referenced, jumping, throwing, catching, hitting, you know, we played rounders, all of this stuff. So UCC looked at um, a bunch of uh, 12 or 13-year-olds, and a lot of them aren't able to do what the six-year-olds should be able to do. And so that comes back to this whole area of play, play on the streets. That's a, that's a social change. Um, but like, I, I don't know if the advice, uh, just send your kids out and, and, you know, we did it in my day, out you go is going to really work with parents today. So, you know, when we're trying to get kids active and that one hour a day, I, that's now going to fall on the schools increasingly, isn't it? It is. Well, we have to go back, I suppose, even I'm older than you. So I'm a product, mm. I grew up in the 60s uh, when probably we were the only house in the village or maybe two others with a TV and all black and white. And when you had to change the channel, you had to get up with your backside. And uh, although we only got UTV up and morning, we didn't get RTE at the time. You had one station. So life was about unstructured play. It was, but you know, we, we had a front, we had a wall in the front of our house in the middle of the village and right in the center of the village. And we, you threw a, a goal on the wall and you spent hours upon hours out on the front street. And that was unstructured play. And, you know, it was a wonderful time. Times have changed. And wh whether we like it or not, the genie is out of the box. Yes. Because kids today live in a digital era. Yeah. And this thing about take away their phones, I mean, the phone is an extension of them. You know, it, it's like the end of the world to take a phone away from a kid. It's part of who they are now. So I think we have to teach kids to live along with this technology. Because remember... Prior to the Industrial Revolution, which isn't that long ago, we spent most of our time hunting and foraging for food. We were physically active all day. Mm. So our genes over 4 million years have evolved for us to be physically active. And when we're not physically active, it is amazing how quickly those genes maladapt and we develop diseases. Right. And people have this perceived notion, well, they're only kids, they're, they're okay, they're fine. Most of the chronic diseases that afflict mo the modern society, their genesis are in childhood. Right. And the I, 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 I suspect the overweight or even obese kid doesn't tend to turn that around. No, I, I think, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because my concern, believe it or not, I believe, and this is a hunch of mine, uh, we have run a school's fitness challenge for the last 10 years. So we've collected data, a bleep test on 213,000 kids wow. over a 10 year period. So it's a pretty wow. large study. Okay. And, and But it's only in one of those four components. It's only in cardiovascular fitness. We haven't measured their strength. It's something that we're hoping to do in the future is to take those four fitness components. But my concern is I think the top 75%, they're pretty okay. Right. I think the bottom 25% are falling off a cliff. A falling off a cliff. And I think they're going, they're going to be the, 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 probably that bottom even... 20% will result in probably 90% of healthcare spending in 50 years, 60 years. It's so just that, that that's, that's those individuals, bomb. because they're, they're overweight, they're inactive, you know, and it's very, very hard to get them engaged in even in play and in fun activities. And have you be, been able to identify the reasons as to why they are headed for that cliff? I mean, socioeconomic issues have to come into play, I presume. Yeah, I mean, we, we, even... We have preliminary data uh, in, our, in that school's fitness challenge that shows that 
if you are a, a, a boy or a girl, but particularly a girl, and you go to a fee-paying school, you're much more likely to meet the minimum fitness requirements for optimal cardiovascular health compared okay. to a kid who goes to a desk school. Okay. So we know that the, the, you know, the social inequalities are there. To be fair, the Irish government, we, we really try hard you know, to decrease that level of inequality. It is a difficult. There's yeah. intergenerational issues that are very, very difficult to break, but I think we're very aware of them. Teachers are aware of them. Schools are aware, are aware of them, but it is a difficult. And we're living more and more in urban, in urban areas mm. and safety and access to, to safe environments is becoming an issue. You know, being, being honest, Joe, and I'm not wearing my GEA hat here, but can you imagine what the infrastructure in this country, the sporting infrastructure in Ireland would be like if the GA hadn't hadn't have existed? Mm. We have only started to spend money on sporting infrastructure in the last quarter of a century. Yeah. Prior to that, the government spent nothing. You know, it was left to the device of, of, of the local clubs or whatever the case may be. So we failed for a hundred years and we started we started probably when it was too late. Mm. And I think I would like to see an awful lot more municipal facilities that every sport can use. It's not GA specific, it's not soccer, it's not rugby. You build these facilities, in our, particularly in our towns and our urban areas, that all kids get access to, regardless of what sport that you actually play. Mm, okay. So let's get into adolescence then, and I, we'll leave behind the kids. And again, one in 10 from memory you said there are getting their one hour of daily activity. Well, sorry, sorry, Joe, can yeah. I just state something before you go on? Yes, I sp do. spoke to Mick Bohan, who is a PE teacher, and everyone would know Mick, he's coached the women's Dublin's football team. Yeah. And he's been teaching PE now for up to 30 plus years. And his biggest issue at the moment, and it goes back to the Cork study, is that the kids coming into secondary school don't have the basic fundamental motor skills to engage in physical education. Okay. So that's analogous to a kid coming into secondary school and not doing basic arithmetic and then asking them to do algebra in first year. It just okay. won't happen. Or to teach, okay. you know, the, the, the reading, writing and arithmetic. So we have a huge problem and I think we need to spend, before you go on from the primary school, I think we need to take a hard look and the ASTA are totally opposed to this. We've got to get to grips with the 20, we're living in the 21st century. We need to put, there's nothing more important to a child in national school, I don't care what anyone tells me, than their health. And we're neglecting it. And we need to spend, send qualified physical education teachers into our primary schools. And it could be one teacher for every three schools. And they could be able to, in addition to providing classes, could also upskill the teachers that are currently there. But left to the devices of teachers who have an interest in activity or sport, that is simply not good enough. Okay, so at the moment, you're too much at the uh, whim of a given teacher and you hope they're into their sport and they do a good job as a PE teacher, but you could be unlucky in that regard. Correct.